what the global population will be like in the middle and in the end of the 21st century. Is it going to increase or decline? Seems that it's going to grow all the time, but recent studies claim otherwise. It's going to increase by the 2046 and then decline by the 2100. How can economy and environment be affected? What problems can we face and what benefits can we have? In this video, we'll often refer to total fertility rate, TFR. What does this definition mean? Total fertility rate, in simple terms, refers to total number of children born or likely to be born to a woman in her lifetime. TFR of about 2.1 children per woman is called replacement level fertility. This value represents the average number of children a woman would need to have to reproduce herself by bearing a daughter who survives to childbearing age. If replacement level fertility is sustained over a sufficient long period, each generation will exactly replace itself without any need for the country to balance the population by international migration. If TFR is less than 2.1, it means that population is going to decline which will lead to certain problems. Scientists from Washington University in Seattle modeled future population in reference and alternative scenarios as a function of fertility, migration and mortality rates. In this video, we will refer to their study because it's something new in population research. In reference scenario, the global population was projected to peak in 2046 at 9.73 billion people and declined to 8.79 billion people in 2100. The global TFR in the reference scenario was forecasted to 1.66 in 2100. By 2050, 151 countries were forecasted to have a TFR lower than the replacement level. And by the end of the century, there will be 183 countries with a TFR lower than the replacement level. One important determinant of population growth is the rate of fertility decline in high fertility countries, particularly those in sub-Saharan Africa. This rate of decline was driven largely by improvements in access to education and modern contraceptives. Seems like a decline in total world population in latter half of the century is potentially good news for the global environment. Fewer people on the planet in every year between now and 2100 would mean less carbon emission, less stress on global food systems and less likelihood of transgressing planetary boundaries. Also good for the environment, population decline and associated shifts in age structure in many nations might have other profound and often negative consequences. In 23 countries, including Japan, Thailand, Spain and Ukraine, populations are expected to decline by 50% or more. Another 34 countries will probably decline by 25 to 50%, including China, with a forecasted 48% decline. Scientists' findings suggest that the ratio of population older than 80 years to the population younger than 15 years will increase in countries with more than 25% population decline. These population shifts have economic and fiscal consequences that will be extremely challenging. With all other things being equal, the decline in the numbers of working-aged adults alone will reduce GDP growth rates. For example, having fewer individuals in these age groups might reduce innovations in economies and fewer workers in general might reduce domestic markets for consumer goods because many retirees are less likely to purchase consumer durables than middle-aged and young adults. Developments such as advancements in robotics could substantially change the trajectory of GDP per working age adult, reducing negative effect of the age structure on GDP growth. However, these effects are very difficult to model at this stage. Furthermore, the impact of robotics might have complex effects on countries for which the trajectory for economic growth might be through low-cost labor supply. In countries with slower economic growth and with rising shares of the population who are retired compared with those who are still working, the fiscal sustainability of national health insurance and social security programs will be challenged. In 2100, 
if labor force participation by age and sex does not change, the ratio of the non-working adult population to the working population might reach 1.16 globally, up from 0.8 in 1217. This ratio implies that, at the global level, each person working would have to support through taxation and intra-family income transfers 1.16 non-working individuals. Insecurity from the risk that these programs could fail might generate considerable political stress in societies with this demographic contraction. Fiscal sustainability will add profound political pressure on governments to address the challenge of population decline. Some historians argue that the size of economies translates into geopolitical power. Scientists plotted the forecasted number of working age individuals aged 20 to 46 years for the 10 largest countries in 2017 in the reference scenario. Huge declines in the number of workers were forecasted in China and India alongside steady increases in Nigeria. By 2100, India was forecasted to still have the largest working age population in the world, followed by Nigeria, China and the United States. In a reference scenario, despite fertility rates lower than the replacement level, immigration sustained the United States workforce. Scientists translated these forecasts of working age population into scenarios for total GDP, showing the rank order of the top 25 national economies in 2017, 2030, 2050 and 2100 under the reference scenario. China was forecasted to rise to the top in 2035, but then was superseded by the United States again in 2098 as population decline curtailed economic growth. Other countries bolstered by immigration that rose up in the global rankings by GDP were Australia and Israel. Despite huge declines in population forecasted this century, Japan remained the fourth largest economy in 2100. As nations come to recognize the challenges of fertility rates lower than the replacement level and the potential for demographic contraction, they have four options to pursue. First, attempt to increase the fertility rate by creating a supportive environment for females to have children and pursue their careers. Second, restrict access to reproductive health services. Third, increase labor force participation, especially at older ages. Fourth, promote immigration. It's worth considering how each of these options might play out in different countries. Several governments have pursued explicit policies to increase fertility rates. Some, such as Sweden, Singapore and Taiwan, have tried to create positive environments that facilitate females choosing to have more children. These programs include paid maternity and paternity leave, protection of re-employment rights, childcare and financial incentives for more children. Sweden has seen an increase in its TFR from 1.5 in the late 1990s to 1.9 in 2019. By contrast, positive incentives have had little effect in Singapore and Taiwan, where 2017 TFR levels were 1.26 for Singapore and 1.04 for Taiwan. A short-term solution to declining working age populations is to increase labor force participation. For example, in Japan, where the number of adults aged 15 to 64 years declined by 7.4% between 1990 and 2015, labor force participation at age 65 to 69 years increased from 15.3 to 20.8% in the same period. More generally, labor force participation among females is lower than that of males in almost all countries, so considerable opportunity exists for increased labor supply through greater access to education and employment opportunities for females. Many societies that do not choose immigration as a strategy will probably try to increase labor force participation as a temporary strategy. However, such increases are not a long-term solution because once higher labor force participation rates are achieved, the inexorable decline in population numbers even in those aged 15 to 74 years 
will eventually manifest unless stabilizing forces are implemented. In the future, technological advances might provide a solution to a decline in the workforce. Most of high-income countries with fertility rates lower than the replacement level choose liberal immigration policies as a solution. Among high-income countries, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United States have consistently pursued this approach in the past 30 years. But liberal immigration should be realized with effective assimilation of migrants into the Western society, otherwise situation will be quite hard. While a steady supply of individuals willing to migrate exists nowadays, this might change in the future as countries supplying migrants today increase education access and the standard of living at home. It was a video about a research made by scientists from the University of Washington. Time will tell us if they were right, but I find their forecasts more likely to be true because we can see that current trends described in this research such as low fertility, population aging and declining numbers of workers have strengthened much and of course it will lead to big consequences. I hope you enjoyed this video, I will be glad if you click the like button and leave a comment. See you on next videos.